CJ, my friend Dane, we're live. Here we hey, are. Hey. Let's let Larry bring us in here. Mm-hmm. All Things Unexplained. Hosted by Dr. Mounts. Let's face it, we were always ready to roll without him anyway. <laughs> CJ Derringer. Ain't nobody perfect, right? And Smitty Neves. I've never planned out hardly anything my whole life. I just free ball. Featuring Cajun Man. Uh, I'm just old nobody, somebody looking for somebody. We're back. back no again. Smitty. No Smitty. Like everybody else in the nation, he's not feeling well. <laughs> no, he's he's not. Yeah. So send our best wishes out to poor Smitty at home. Cajun Man still not with us tonight, but I tell you who is with us. The one and only co-hostess with the mostest, CJ Derringer, is with us tonight. Yay. How's it going, CJ? Oh, it's and going well. Awesome, and we're so lucky to be joined by my friend and special guest, adventurer, outdoorsman, Montana native, man with many tales, Mr. Dane Beck. We've been waiting a long time. Well, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. I've been uh, looking forward to this and a big fan of the show. Tim and I have been talking for quite a few years about a lot of the subjects on ATU. So when he started this, uh, yeah, I knew it was gonna go, knew it was gonna go big and go far. Uh, well, I've heard so much about you. You're quite legendary with some of your stories. So I'm excited to hear all about them. Yeah, uh, legend in my own mind. <laughs> uh, okay, you can be a legend with us too. But- <laughs> well, I tell you what, Dane and I were just reminiscing before we went live about, you know, what we were doing, oh, I guess, a year and a half ago, March 2020, you know. That's almost two years things. ago. That's right. It's crazy, almost isn't it? Almost two years almost ago. Almost two years ago. So it's more than a year and a half. And Dane and I were sitting outside downtown Greensboro, North Carolina, you know, waiting to watch the ACC tournament. And all of a sudden, as we said, just like this, something straight out of the stand. The world yeah. started collapsing around us. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, we just, we were just talking about it, but very, uh, very apocalyptic vibe to it. You know, it's like instantly stores were shutting down, and that's all that was on the radio. And um, yeah, the world kind of came to a standstill. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we we were outside to witness it. Yeah, I'll never forget it. We were sitting outside. Both had us a frosty adult beverage and Miami's men's basketball team comes strolling down the street I guess they had probably heard something that we had not quite heard yet and then all of a sudden you know breaking world news Duke is not coming to the ACC tournament and we knew it's it's downhill from here that was it yeah go get your homemade hand sanitizer ingredients (laughs) because we're not going back to work for a while Nothing's yeah. really been the same yeah, since. Just, I mean, mm-hmm. who knew two years later we would still be in the thick of it? I know. And I yeah. mean, I pretty much went home about a week later, called CJ, called Smitty, said, Hey, what about a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> mm. and, and since then, I'm proud to say, as Dane alluded to, we are officially a top 25 science charge po- podcast. Top 25 on the podcast science charts. And we were nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award. Yes, very exciting. And we made a lot of great friends along the way. If you haven't listened to our New Year's Eve shows, another one comes out this Friday with our top guest numbers 10 through 6. And I'd like to give a little shout out right now to some podcast friends of ours, a little shout out to the Twisted Teachers podcast, Kim and Jen. Hey, hope everything's going good over there. 
We're actually going to have them on the show at some point this year and talk talk some teaching. CJ and Dane and I all have some educational background. And, and Smitty, too. And Smitty, that's right. I kind of forget about Smitty every once in a while. And our friends <laughs> over at Within the Mist podcast, make sure to check them out. And while I'm at it, we're on Venmo now. You can Venmo us at Bigfoot UFO. And CJ's got a big shout yes. out, too. Speaking yes. of Venmo. <laughs> a very special thanks to a man who will remain slightly anonymous. We'll just call him Henry P. for now. Thank you for your Venmo donation. I would like to pretend that it was all just for me, but um, I know that it's more about the uh, the podcast and the team. So thank you so much for your Venmo donation. It's very generous. And I will be getting some coffee with it. <laughs> I love that some of our listeners are chiming in on our apocalyptic, you know, memories. Friend of the show, George Winter, said, I'll never forget Tim. <laughs> I had spoken to you. You were at the tournament and said it was canceled. And I, I don't know why George wasn't with us, but anyway, he went to Walmart and still has those canned vegetables. I might have used some of those to make some Hoppin' John last week for New Year's. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. And is that Alabama, George? Is, it, is yes, that Bama, it is. George, Tim? It sure that is. is. That okay. is Bama, George. So uh, Bama, George actually knows Dane from Fantasy Football. Bama George didn't have a good year. I didn't have a good year. But I did win a different league, but we won't. Still, it is what it is. Bama, that's Bama George from our epic fantasy football league, Triad versus Triangle. When you play in 12 fantasy football leagues, your odds do go up that you're going to win one. So hats off to you. That is true. They also go up that you're going to lose a lot. (laughs) So (laughs) it's a catch 22. And off of what George said, if I were to pan out around a little more of my basement, which I'm not going to because I'm in the basement, but uh, I've still got a couple of the big old Tupperware boxes that were right at that time as well, just loaded up canned food, rice, propane, you know, all the, um, I guess, you know, the, 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 the bug out box, survivalist box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that actually 22 reminds shells. Me. I just remember we had a listener. <laughs> question last spring maybe last summer cj this just popped back in my mind does covid affect bigfoot oh that's right (laughs) (laughs) well it probably can you know they've been testing uh white-tailed deer for covid and and a lot of white-tailed deer have been positive for covid now they're not symptomatic but they definitely have the strain of covid in them um and you know they're not sure how that happened if it started potentially with like some domesticated deer that were in touch with you know uh domesticated deer in touch with human beings and got it from a human Mm. and then i guess there's a lot of interaction through the fence with wild deer and domestic deer but it was a you know one of those strange articles yeah you get into at 3 (laughs) a.m yeah and you know otters too i was at the zoo recently and i noticed that a an extra large fencing area around the the otter territory, mm-hmm. and it, they had signs up everywhere that said otters can catch COVID. COVID too. Right. So don't get too close. I think they even I think even hippos. Right. They found COVID in hippos. Wild. So the bottom now, line is the question. It's I always mean, coming back. Coronavirus has been around for a long, long, long time. But they probably Since weren't the dawn testing. Of they probably weren't testing animals for it until very recently. So whether or not they have it now, all of a sudden, or if they've had it all along, who's to know? Uh, yeah, that's one of those crazy subjects. We can go right, and we won't. And we'll avoid that. Of, oh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go box, but and avoid. But that it is one. interesting. Yeah, the the animal sex. Remember, very originally, you know, it came from the uh wet markets in china pass animal to animal to human being um and now there's a lot of theories on what actually happened the okay. origin of it but uh well um initially, I'll, yeah yeah i'll just say that you know to directly answer the question i think no covid has not affected bigfoot in so much that bigfoot has covid and is having side effects from COVID or is getting sick from COVID, but I think that it actually has 
probably affected Bigfoot sightings in that, for example, you know, there's still waits at a lot of parks in different areas, you know, for parking and people are getting outside and they suddenly discovered, man, it's great to be outdoors. We got to do something and suddenly we've got Bigfoot sightings galore, you know, Bigfoot sightings going up. And I think Bigfoots, they stayed out there, but the people got more outdoors. And so we had a lot more sightings, I think, since COVID-2020. Yeah, yeah. The people, uh, I think there's a lesson to be learned from all of this. And kind of a simple one was to take advantage of your time and get outside and uh, take advantage of na- nature. Um, I know my little county in Montana where I'm from, like, they had 30,000 people move into the state in 2020 and they were under a million in the whole state at that point. So 30,000 was a huge number. And a lot of it was California. Um, some, you know, from the Arizona area, Washington, just moving from more populated places to less, I guess, you know, the, the end reason to take advantage of nature, get into the wilderness, and, um, you know, live a healthier existence. But, but yeah. yeah, then to your point, just being outside is going to up the odds of, uh, you know, possible Sasquatch encounters, kind of like the fantasy football thing. You play in enough leagues, <laughs> bound to win one or two. That's right. So you've definitely and spent still lots doesn't... of time outside pre-COVID. It sounds like you were an outdoorsman from the start. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So I'm born and raised... Uh, outside of a little town in Northwest Montana called East Glacier. It's actually on an Indian reservation, the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, which is the largest in the lower 48. Wow. Um, my dad's ranch is called Bear Creek Ranch because um, it's right on Bear Creek and there's a lot of bears there. And the creek's about 75 yards from our back door. Uh, beautiful area and it's looking at Glacier Park. And if you were to go straight north, just on a walkabout, um, from our property, you would hit the Canadian border. So it's the Canadian Rockies. Um, my father was a hunting outfitter when I grew up. He had a hunting camp that was a 17 mile horseback ride just to get there. It wasn't accessible wow. by anything, um, but horseback. And uh, it was, they were primarily hunting just about everything, but it was um, bull elk was the, the premium, but uh, bull elk, mule deer, um, black bear uh, there were a lot of grizzlies in the area um, but they were protected from hunting i think that started in 1984 uh, a lot of mountain lions moose bighorn sheep mountain goats you name it you know a bit a big game area but just a large vast area um uh, and all that too where my father's hunting camp was was the bob marshall wilderness area which is the largest wilderness area in the united states um so being a wilderness area it's not exactly a national park but uh, there's no motorized vehicles allowed on any of the trails um i think it's uh, i have to look it up it's several million acres though wow. um, so yeah b- big area so i grew up outside grew up on horseback a lot grew up in hunting camp a lot i mean when i was two three four five years old um you know we had a, a little camp that was about half a dozen canvas wall tents and little uh barrel stove wood stove in each of them and it's cold cold place there's snow uh year round there really year round um in the high country yeah uh for example glacier national park which is very close to where i live they've got this famous road called going to the sun road i'm sure a lot of your listeners have probably been on that road and it's just this beautiful Mm -hmm. just winding road that goes through the mountains going to the sun as it's called um, and when you get to the pass there logan's pass at the very top uh, mind you this road can, is only open about 60 to 80 days out of the year oh because goodness. it's it takes so long that for the snow to melt but when you go to the top it can be you know the second week of july um as deep into summer as you can get and there's still several feet of snow wow. uh, we actually went up as, in high school and would uh we'd park and we'd be, we'd have our shirts off and everything and bring our snowboards and go ride down these big slopes and make little jumps and stuff, have our beer, staying cold in the snow, catching a tan at the same time. Not in high school. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on the Canadian border. So that was, uh, I think dr- the drinking age was 18. Oh, 
that, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the drinking age in Mississippi was never. Yeah. <laughs> you are yeah. never allowed to drink <laughs> in Mississippi. So, CJ, one thing I appreciate about Dane is that he has so much outdoors experience and so much experience out in the wild and in nature and in Montana and different places. He has a really, you know, down to earth perspective on a lot of these things dealing with Bigfoot and UFOs and different topics and of course we came here tonight to talk about Bigfoots and UFOs and I actually Dane has a couple of interesting hot takes on some of these Bigfoot experiences and Dane I want to throw one at you real quick here so a lot of things a lot of times we hear Bigfoot hunters and Bigfoot witnesses say okay whatever I saw it was walking up right, and so I know that it wasn't a bear. Now, I, Dane actually had me taken aback by his response to that first time I talked talked to him about it. Dane, what, what's been your experience with upright, bipedal, large animals? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's a fascinating topic. Um, you know, this isn't my theory, or, <clears throat> you know, I didn't come up with this idea on my own, but... So I did grow up in a place uh, with a lot of bears, black bears and grizzly bears. Uh, we actually had a grizzly bear get into our house one time, <laughs> um, just kind of push the back door open when we were gone. And uh, we were down the street, uh, actually at this little bar restaurant. I was a kid and was with my stepmom and we came back. And uh, as we pulled into, the, pulled into the driveway and the headlights shined in, you could see the bear in the house. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, so being around a lot of bears and just in a community where people were constantly having confrontations with bears, um, I've kind of always, always thought that, uh, you know, a lot of these big fight, Bigfoot sightings could absolutely be bears just because if, especially in where there's brush or, you know, uh, not very substantial lighting, you know, sun going down, whatever it may be. Uh, when you see a bear walking on their hind feet, I mean, it, it can look very human-like, uh, very gorilla-like. Um, you know, it definitely changes the posture of the bear. Like when you look at him, I mean, it, it doesn't look very bear-like. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, you can YouTube clips of, you know, just basically, you know, bipedal movements of black bears and grizzly bears. Um, and if you, you know, like they're say eating berries in a high place. And so there's brush between your line of sight and the bear and they're on their hind feet and they're walking behind. I mean, you know, their, their ears are up in the air and they're cruising along like, um, <laughs> you know, I would say, you know, like a, a, a Yeti or a Sasquatch could be. Hmm. Um, so I, I think it'd be, you know, quite possible. I, I would say for sure, guaranteed some Bigfoot sightings definitely were bears. How many steps, um, especially so many, how many yeah. steps typically can bears take when they're on two paws like that, on two feet like that? I mean, it, I'm sure it depends on the bears, black bears, for example, that are smaller than grizzly bears, uh, oftentimes half the size. Um, they can go a lot longer. I mean, a trained black bear can technically walk a mile on their hind oh, feet. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, you know, I guess that classic scene of a Yeti walking across an avalanche chute or a big out of the woods into an open field. I mean, you'd be able to tell the difference then, you know, you could say, okay, yeah, that's obviously a bear because they've kind of got a waddle to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, they can be pretty agile and, uh, move pretty well just on, on two feet. Um, and I could, I mean, I could definitely imagine, um, you know, at a distance, the sun going down and seeing something walking on two feet, um, and it could being a bear and just, you know, your imagination getting, getting to you and, um, or just, you know, looking at it and saying that, look, that may be a bear, but it definitely has some, uh, you know, ape-like characteristics. Um, but I oh, think yeah. they can surprise you, um, just just um because of the show and i was thinking about that in our past conversation that i had with tim i uh 
watch some of it on YouTube, just, just Google, just YouTube, you know, black bear walking on two feet. And I mean, there's a lot of footage that, uh, you know, especially someone who's maybe not an avid outdoorsman, if they saw that, they could think anything. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's a great hot take. And Dane, another thing that Bigfoot skeptics point out is where are the bodies? Where are the bones? You know, where are the decaying bodies at of Bigfoot? But in in your experience, you know, in your times in Montana and various places, did you ever run into any bear carcasses or skeletons? Um, you know, that's a good point. Uh, you know, no, I don't think being out and about that I've actually, uh, yeah, come across a bear skeleton. I mean, stuff in the wilderness does, um, you know, it gets, uh, they'll, they'll be, you know, scavenged, I guess. Um, you know, something's decaying. There'll be animals on it that need to eat. And, right. You know, probably move the bones around and stuff, um, bury it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, I know hunting with my dad before we did come across a black bear one time that was dead, but it had been shot and gotten away, um, from a hunter who, you know, just must not got a good shot on it. Like a, a gut shot or something as they call it, which is sad too, but, um, you know, they can go for miles on that, but, you know, eventually do die. Um, and I guess maybe too, just the amount of herd animals, elk and deer, um, that, you know, there's just more of them. And so when they die, I mean, cause you do, uh, we, you know, you do often find elk and deer bones, mm. um, you know, in those big wilderness areas. Um, speaking of which I've got a, I've got an old, uh, black bear skull right there. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You sure do. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't look very human. Doesn't look very, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely a much uh, different head shape than a, than a Yeti. Yeah, but you know, one head shape that I you do hear and see witnesses describe sometimes is a Neanderthal head shape. Like it looked like a Neanderthal, and you know, I feel like with the black bear, they seem to have those mask right of like this brown fur on their face like right in the midst of all the black fur. And I can just kind of picture that being construed as like a creepy man-like Neanderthal situation. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, they can have that, you know, flat forehead kind of going into the into the snout there. Um, like, a, like a Neanderthal probably could. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, the big, big teeth up front are, uh, are something, but I guess we have little canines as well. Um, and most of the teeth on black bear outside, I think of the, the four, I guess, what are, what are they called? Incisors are the, you know, more for the hunting mm-hmm. and more for their tool, but the rest are, are, you know, heavy molars like us. Oh yeah. And you know, we're here tonight with special guest Dane Beck. Adventure outdoorsman, man with many tales, and Dane and CJ, this week, Brent Swenser for Mysterious Universe wrote a fascinating article, Bizarre Cases of Bigfoot and Portals to Other Dimensions. So essentially, it's several cases of witnesses of Bigfoot, but not your standard Bigfoot sightings. We're talking about Bigfoot or sightings of Bigfoots and that they just appeared out of nowhere and disappeared out of nowhere. And it actually really ties together a lot of the problems that we have in some of our our Bigfoot theories. So one particular case he talks about is a Ronnie LeBlanc in Massachusetts. Now, when he was 12 years old... There was one particular trail that Ronnie said he never went down. It was always very dark and ominous feeling. And he said even on a beautiful day, you could look down this trail and it, and it just was still dark, you know, and just looked like somewhere you didn't want to, to go down. And he said, you know, he was, one day, for whatever reason, he decided to go down the trail. 
and he heard just like this super loud thundering of feet, and he could hear the brush moving side to side, and he he sensed something large cross the path in front of him, but he couldn't see it. There was nothing there, and he could see it enter the brush on the other side, and Mr. LeBanc actually said he's heard of other sightings from people in the area, just like what he had, and he, he theorizes that whatever's behind the sightings, and I thought this was fascinating, could be cloaking itself or dematerializing at will or passing through a portal between different realities. He said that people have seen Bigfoot holding orbs and, you know, they've seen orbs floating in the sky. It really reminded me, first of all, his quote about, about seeing this thing Reminded me of Predator. I'm not sure if CJ seen Predator, but I know Dane has. Yeah, it's been a while. It's definitely going to be on the rewatchables list now, though. Why yeah, Predator? so you know how the Predator had... Well, Predator wore not Arnold. Some people think Arnold Schwarzenegger when you mention Predator, but yeah. Predator was the, the hunter, the alien hunter, right? But he wore this alien technology that cloaked cloaked him into its surroundings okay when we say right? cloak are we talking like harry potter style invisibility cloak yes okay. yes exactly uh what would think advanced technology but uh, or of course who knows what what could make a bigfoot cloak but then it also made me think about where we live here in north carolina dane is actually in north carolina with cj and myself and we hear about all these in the Bigfoot hotspots here in North Carolina, you also have sightings of orbs and UFO activity and other paranormal activity. And man, it just kind of, you know, it, it would explain, if you're looking for another explanation of why, where are the bodies? Where are, where's the photographic evidence? You know, hey, the ability to move between dimensions, cloaking, it would explain some of that. Well, it's very similar to a lot of the UFO stories that we hear, too, of something was there in sight, clear as day, and then it was just gone without without any movement. It just was simply gone, vanished. So maybe they are. Yeah, yeah. E either cloaking or a wormhole, you know, very uh, high-tech or advanced camouflage. Um which, yeah, I, I, I agree with CJ about the, uh, you know, it's, it seems like you hear about that a lot more with UFOs, you know, flying saucers coming in and out of the ocean and um, moving at high rates of speed and disappearing. But, uh, yeah, I, I actually hadn't heard of that or even necessarily thought about that before with Bigfoot. Um, but as you just said, Tim, you know, that would <clears throat> definitely uh, explain why there hasn't been any um, bodies found. Um, cause you definitely, I mean, that, that's a big one by now through all the years, um, of, you know, or I guess of human existence and human Sasquatch existence somewhere along the line, we would have one body, one full fossil, um, right? you know, I know we've found frozen Neanderthals right? You know, in the, in the tundra in Northern Alaska, complete dinosaurs, um, <laughs> but of course, there are those that say we actually do have alien bodies, you know, perhaps recovered at Roswell, maybe at other crash sites. But part of this article, and we're talking about an article that came out this week in Mysterious Universe, Bizarre Cases of Bigfoot and Portals to Other Dimensions, is that when people think of aliens and UFO encounters, they tend to think of gray beings or green be beings, you know, these stereotypical alien creatures. But what if we're thinking of the aliens all wrong? What, what if these UFOs, these portals, are delivering aliens and they're, they're Bigfoot? So if we're going down that path... What purpose would big? Oh, yeah. what, well, what, what purpose would Bigfoot have as an alien? I, I, mean, I mean, if they're you know, making advances in, into this world, like, you know, you'd, you'd think maybe in, if they're in the body of a of Sasquatch, you know, what, uh, what is their intention if, you know, they're just made, 
mostly spotted in very, very remote places on their own. You'd think if they could uh, warp in and out, they might be closer to civilization doing some uh, 007. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey, you never know. So, one account from the article, and Dane, you'll appreciate this. This was actually relayed onto the show Coast to Coast AM. Dane has some good uh, history with Coast to Coast AM. But this this fella, and he only went by the and it was actually on a Coast to Coast AM episode, July fifteenth, two thousand sixteen. Man who only called himself Gene. To be continued. You've been listening to All Things Unexplained. If you liked this podcast, please do give us a five star rating and leave us a review. If you would like to hear more All Things Unexplained, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Our show depends on the support of listeners like you. To help keep us going, please be sure to visit patreon.com backslash all things unexplained. Our Patreon patrons get early access to podcasts as well as exclusive audio and video clips. Or you can find us on Venmo under the business accounts. Just look for at Bigfoot UFO. Additionally, you can support us at buymeacoffee.com backslash unexplained. If you can't get enough of us, go ahead and check us out at allthings-unexplained.com. A special thanks to our producer, director, sound mixer, editor, and the man who wears far too many hats. No, seriously, he wears a lot of hats, Dr. Tim Mounts. Without you, we couldn't keep the lights on. Thanks for listening to All Things Unexplained.